Hello, cooking enthusiasts. Today's video is not a simple recipe, or even a recipe that I claim to be simple, but it isn't. Today is a maximum effort recipe. It is my technique for making the perfect fruit syrup. Now, that being said, this process is actually relatively straightforward to explain, in my opinion, and at each step, there is a choice you can make to make the whole process a little less crazy and time-consuming. However, you can also do the maximum effort version. But what I am essentially creating is a slightly new or modified technique for making a fruit preserve, but instead of being a jam or a jelly, it's a syrup that is optimized for the maximum concentration of the fresh fruit flavor. Step one is you need some fruit juice. I would say minimum two liters of fruit juice, preferably four or five if you want a good yield of syrup. Now again, this is a part where you can make your life easier or more complicated. For a simple first attempt, you could even just make a small amount of apple syrup by buying a decent amount of a good quality apple juice. You may also have a smaller local-ish company that makes some good or interesting fruit juices. I have done this technique with store-bought juice or even mixing some store-bought juice with some fresh juice, but my preference is juicing fruit myself because it lets me play with flavors that you don't normally see as juices in a store. Once you buy or make your juice, you need to clarify the juice. At a minimum, you will need pectinase enzyme. My preference is the Pectinex brand. This should be available online or at wine-making stores. For clarifying citrus and other things that are quite acidic, you will also need Kieselsol and Chitosan, which are also wine-fining agents and can be found at similar locations. Clarifying your juice can be as simple as adding 2 grams of pectinase enzyme per liter of juice and simply letting it sit in the fridge for a day or so and then carefully scooping off the top layer of clear juice. As I've demonstrated many times, I am crazy, so I bought a culinary centrifuge. So this makes the clarification process much simpler for me. Instead of waiting several hours or even overnight, I can let my enzyme work for a few hours and then very simply separate the clarified juice from the cloudy particulates. But I will point out that I did play around with this technique before I had a centrifuge, so I know it is 
definitely possible. It just takes a little bit more time and patience. Either way, you should have at least a liter and a half, if not more, of clarified juice. You now need to know the sugar content of your juice, and for that, you'll need a hydrometer or a refractometer, which are relatively inexpensive to get. Most fruit juices are going to be between 10 and 15 percent sugar, and what I did was top it up so that it was roughly 20 percent sugar. So, for example, if I had juice that was 12 percent sugar, I added 8 grams of plain white sugar for every 100 grams of juice. If I had juice that was 15 percent sugar, I added 5 grams of sugar for every 100 grams of juice. In the end, after concentration, I want to end up with a syrup that's 80% sugar, so I'm making it roughly 20% now, both to increase my final yield and make the math easier for estimating my final yield. This is another step where you can make things easier for yourself. Before concentrating, you could add significantly more sugar than I do. You could double the amount of sugar in your juice. You could bring it up to 30, 40, or even 50 percent by adding white sugar. I think those are totally valid techniques. The only reason I'm not adding very much sugar is again, I'm optimizing for the concentration of the fruit flavor itself. Once you've added the sugar, the next step is concentration, which again might even be optional depending on how much sugar you add. The minimum I would go for is a 50% or 50 bricks simple syrup. If you've just added that as white sugar, you could keep your syrup in the fridge for a few weeks and call it a day. But as I mentioned earlier, my preference is to make a roughly 80% or 80 bricks syrup, and that requires significant concentration, especially if you've added very little sugar. Of course, the simplest way to concentrate this syrup is to simply boil it down and use a temperature chart from candy making until you reach approximately 80% sugar. If you do this, you'll end up with still a very flavorful fruit syrup preserve that you could probably can like you would any other jam or jelly. The maximum effort version of this step is to concentrate the syrup using sous vide. I generally have a two tray system where my syrup is in a hotel pan insert open to the air, preferably with a nice strong fan blowing on it to encourage evaporation. Uh, the water in my circulator is covered and set at 62 degrees Celsius, but depending on your setup, you may need to go a little higher. Whatever 
temperature will get your syrup to 60 Celsius. And now, having your syrup at 60 Celsius is sort of a minimum temperature. It's going to discourage any spoiling or fermentation, but it is going to create a very slow evaporation. Obviously, some of the really volatile aromas in the fruit juice will be lost, but at these lowish temperatures, you really don't get any cooked fruit flavors. I would say, depending on how much you're doing, evaporating the syrup this way takes about 24 to 36 hours total, but you can do it in multiple stages by storing the syrup in the fridge when you're not evaporating it. And the primary way I check if I'm done is by weighing the syrup. For my parameters, I know I expect roughly 250 grams of finished syrup for every one kilogram of juice I started with. Obviously, it is a lot of work, but the final product is such a flavorful, shelf-stable syrup that I personally think it can be worth it. I focus so much on concentrating the flavor because there are many applications where you're not going to use very much sweetener, but you still want a really powerful flavor of whatever fruit you're working with. I love using these syrups for ice cream, kombucha, cocktails, so many other desserts and recipes where you don't need to use very much, but the impact on the flavor is tremendous. So, I highly encourage you to at least play around with some aspects of this technique. Preserve a nice in-season flavor that you want to use all year round. Find nuances by concentrating things you've never tasted in a concentrated form before. There are so many possibilities. If you have any questions about this technique, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for watching.